glam bands and the metal bands of the 80s and 90s or whatever, they all have that long hair because they don't care about the authority of God. It's rebellion. Turn, if you would, to 1 Timothy chapter 2. Again, you know, the sermon goes hand in hand with the, with the one earlier today because it does have to do a lot with gender, but I'm focusing more specifically on our outward appearance, one in the hair. Now, that passage is enough. We're not going to a whole bunch of different passages about, the, um, about your hair length or your hairstyle or things like that. There's one more here in 1 Timothy chapter 2 we're going to look at for women more, but, um, but that's enough. And that's clear enough. And we don't need to jump around and prove it ten times from the Bible uh, about our hair length. But we're also going to be talking about the, how we dress. Because, yes, that does also matter to the Lord. But look at 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 9. The Bible reads, "...in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel." with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Now, there's a lot of things we could go into in this passage. I'm not going to go into all of them. But notice, first of all, what matters the most is, is emphasized here is what's on the inside. He's saying that you shouldn't be so concerned about the, the broided hair and spending all this time on your hair and, and getting it all super perfect and really nice and spending time and money getting your hair broided and gold and pearls and costly array and just dressing up the outside of, of just these jewels and things that you're going to put on. But rather, what God really wants you to do is, it says, which becometh women professing godliness. You want to be a godly woman. You want to be a righteous woman. Don't worry about that stuff, but worry about having the good works. Because that's what comes from within. That comes from the person from within. And then it says, of course, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor use super authority over the man, but to be in silence. In verse number 9, notice it also says that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Now, modesty, generally what we think of, if you're going to say a woman needs to dress modestly, the first thing that would probably come to your mind is referring to maybe how low cut of, of a garment she has on her top, whether it be a dress or a shirt or whatever, or how tight fitting it is. And yes, that is... Um, those things can be considered immodest. But the word modesty itself is really just referring to anything that's going to draw attention to yourself. So it's more encompassing. When, when, when a woman's shirt is cut really low, what does that do? It draws the eyes of a lot of men. Look, it's going to happen. And you can't just say that, oh, well, they shouldn't be looking. Yeah, they shouldn't be looking, but you know what? You shouldn't be, be offering it up either. Because that's immodest. Because what's it going to do? If you know you're going to draw attention to yourself, then don't do it. And I'll tell you right now, maybe you didn't know, you, it will. Okay, now you know. <laughs> I don't think you needed me to teach you that. You should know that. Yeah, you probably learned from a young age that, that, that you will get a lot of eyes on you, ladies, the way that you dress. 